Hello, this is Professor Kitch, and this is first in a series of webcasts to show you how to automate Microsoft Word and save time in preparing your documents. In this particular webcast, you will learn how to turn on and off the formatting and paragraph mark symbols within Microsoft Word, how to add page numbers, and also how to use section breaks so you can format your document into different sections. We will be using the Engineering Challenge example document, which you can download out of your Engineering 1201 Blackboard. Before we start the actual instruction, let's take a quick look at this document and see what's in there. To get a good look at the overall document, I'm going to change the view on the View menu to a multiple page. That will allow me to see it page by page. The first page of the document is the cover page, which you learned to create earlier in Engineering 1201. Followed by the cover page are a number of pages which we call front matter. They include the abstract, a table of contents, and then a list of figure and a list of tables. After the front matter, the body of the report itself starts. And here we see the body has several sections. It has an introduction section. It has the section called Challenges to Secure Water Supplies. It has two more sections, a solution sections and a conclusion section, followed finally by the references. So there are three parts or sections to the report. The cover page, the front matter, and then the body of the report itself. Well, our first objective in this lesson is to show you how to turn on and turn off the formatting marks that show you how the document is formatted. If you look at this page of the document, it looks in its final form and you don't see any stray or extraneous marks. But actually hidden behind all this text that's here is a bunch of information about how the document is formatted. And if you come up to the ribbon at the top and you find this symbol that looks like a backwards P, that's a paragraph mark. And if you click that symbol, it will turn on and turn off or show and hide all the formatting marks in the document. So if I click it on, you'll notice I see a whole lot more stuff on this page. I see the tab symbols like this, and I see all the paragraph marks at the ends of each paragraph. When I'm developing documents, I normally work with this symbols turned on because it helps me understand the formatting. And I'll give you just a quick example of that. If you look at these first two paragraphs, if I turn the symbols off, they look like they're exactly the same. They both have an indent and they look the same. But if I turn the, sim the symbols on, you notice that they're actually different. This first paragraph doesn't have an indented first line, it just has a tab to indent the first line, where the second paragraph actually has an indentation. Let me show you that a little more clearly if I zoom in here. So here, if I put my cursor in the first paragraph and I look at the top, it shows where the indentations are, you'll see that there are no indentations. Whereas if I click on the second paragraph down here, you'll see that this is different and the indentation symbols are different. So I'm going to go back to the first paragraph. I'm going to fix that to be like the second. So I'm going to come up here to the first paragraph, click at the beginning of it. I'm going to hit delete to delete that tab. And then I'm going to come up here and format the indentation by clicking on this little triangle thing at the top and sliding it over. And that's the first, par first line indentation. You'll see that. Uh, this lower one here controls the indentation for the rest of the paragraph. And you can see I can move that in and out. But I want that to be on the left hand side. So now I've changed the format of this paragraph so these two paragraphs are actually formatted the same and I'm not using a tab to indent the first line. So to show or hide the formatting marks we click this paragraph symbol at the ribbon at the top and it turns the paragraph symbols and the other formatting marks on or off. Well our second objective in this particular webcast is to learn how to automatically put page numbers on. Now if I scroll through this document, you'll see that it's not terribly long. It only has eight pages in it, but we could have documents that are much longer, and it sure would be nice to have page numbers on the, each page. And so when we added pages to the document, it automatically updated the page numbers. And Microsoft Word has a really easy way to do that. If you come up to the Insert menu and click on Insert, you'll find over here about halfway along the ribbon bar this page number tool. 
And if you click down on the arrow for page numbers, you'll see there's a whole bunch of different ways to put in page numbers. You can put them at the top, at the bottom, in the page margins, or the current location. Pretty much, we usually want to put them at the bottom. So I'm going to come over here, hover over the bottom of the page tool, come over here and look at these. I'm going to put just this simple plain number at the bottom. I'm going to click on that, and a couple things happen here. First thing you notice is that the format of the page changed. And I now have both the header and the footer displayed. The header and the footer are special parts of the document that appear above and below the actual body text. And if we look down at the footer part, you'll see that there's a page number on every page. If I scroll the way down to the end, we go up to page 8, and I scroll the way to the top, and we see we start with page 1. And if I double-click outside of the header or footer, they'll close, but I can still see the page numbers. Well, that's nice to now have page numbers on my document, but the way I put them in isn't the way we normally use page numbers in our engineering documents. I put these simple page numbers on, and the cover page now has a number one on it, and then this front matter that starts with the abstract and goes all the way through the tables and figures have the numbers two through four on them. And then the body of the report itself actually starts on page number five. And that's not the way we normally do stuff in engineering. Normally, in our engineering papers, the cover page will not have a number on it at all. And then this front matter, which here starts on page two, will actually start with Roman numerals, you know, the I's and the V's. And then when we get to the body of the report, we generally start with the Arabic numbers, as we normally do. But we wouldn't start at 5 here. We'd really want to start at 1. So the question is, how can I set up different page numbering on these different parts of the document? Well, the way I set up different page numberings on different parts of the document is to actually divide the document up into different sections. And if you'll think about it for a minute, we really have three different sections in this document. We have the cover page, which is one section to itself. And then we have the front matter, the abstract, all the way through the list of figures of tables, and then the body. So I want to separate the cover page from the front matter and the body. So to do that, the first thing I'm going to do is come turn on my editing symbol so I can see where the page breaks are and things like that. And then I'm going to come up to this layout menu. And in the layout menu, you'll find a tool called breaks. I'm going to click on the down arrow for the breaks, and you'll see there's a bunch of different kind of breaks we can put in. Uh, one set of breaks are things like page breaks and column breaks, but we want to go to section breaks down here because we want to break the document up into different sections. So we'll be using this section break part. So the first thing I want to do is put my cursor where I want to separate the document. And I want to separate the document here at the very bottom of the cover page. That's where I'm going to put my first break. And I'm going to come up to the break section. I'm going to pick on the section breaks. There's a bunch of different kinds I can put in. I can do a break that puts in a new page. I can do a break that's continuous but doesn't put in a new page. I can break on even and odd pages. And what I want to do here is use this next page one because I want to put in a, a break to break the document into more than one section and then I want the new section to start on a new page. So I'm going to click this one, next page. And now if you look down here at the bottom of the page, you'll see this new symbol down here that says section break, next page. And then sure enough, the document continues on a new page. Now I have this old column break from when I formatted the document manually. I don't want to get rid of that, so I'm going to hit delete. And now you'll see that I have the abstract, which is the beginning of the front matter, starting on a new page. And if I double click down here in the footer, you can tell that I've got a new section because if you look on the cover page, you'll see it says footer section one. And if you look at the beginning of the front matter, you'll see it says footer section two. I also noticed down in the footer here that I have this extra paragraph mark that I was left over from when I inserted the page numbers. I'm going to get rid of that. I'm just going to delete that so I don't have that extra paragraph there. And then the next thing I want to do is scroll down to where I want the next section break to be. And that one I want to break between the front matter, which ends at the list of tables here, and the next page, which is the body. So I'm going to double click out of the footer. I'm going to put my cursor here right before this column break uh, that goes 
between the front matter and the body of the report. I'm going to come back to the Layout tab, Layout, Breaks. I'm going to put another one of these section breaks in the next page type. I'm going to click on that. And then again, I see this new section break there. Um, it creates a new page break. I need to scroll down here and get rid of the old page break that I had there. And so now, if I double click on the footer, you'll see this is now footer section 3. So I've now formatted my document into three different sections. Section 1 is for the cover page. Section 2 is for the front matter. And section 3 is for the body of the report. So now that I have the report broken into three sections, all I have to do now is change the format of the page numbers at the bottom of each section. So I'm going to scroll back up to the top of the document. And if I click here in the Section 2 header, you'll notice that there's a tab over here that says this is the same as the Section 1 header. And so, for instance, if I was to go over to the Section 1 header and change that, for instance, by deleting the page numbers and the Section 1 header, um, you notice that the page numbers get deleted in the Section 2 header, too, and that's not what I wanted. So I'm going to undo that. So what I need to do is separate the footers so that they're not the same in each one. So if I click over here in the Section 2 footer, and I go up to the top, you see this thing is highlighted where it says Link to Previous Section. Well, I'm going to click that again, and that's going to unlink the footer sections. So if I look down at the bottom now, you see that the Section 1 footer and the Section 2 footer are no longer linked together. So now that they're no longer linked together, I can edit them separately. So I'll go back to the Section 1 footer. Now this is the footer for the cover page. And on the cover page, I don't want to have any page numbers. So I'm just going to highlight the page number there. And I'm going to hit Delete, and that will delete the page number. And you'll see now on the cover page, I have no page number. And if I double click out of the footer, there's a cover page with no page number. So I've eliminated the page number on the cover page. And now I want to edit the page number on the front matter. So it's no longer an Arabic number, but it's now uses Roman numerals. So I'm going to double click into the footer there. Again, I'm going to highlight the page number. I'm going to put my cursor on top of the page number. I'm going to right click. And I'll get a new menu, and in that menu, I'll see a Format Page Number icon. And I can click on that, and it'll bring up this menu, which allows me to format the page numbers. So there's two things I want to do to change the format. First, I want to come down here to the Number Format, and I want to change it from Arabic to Roman numerals. But then I also want it to start numbering at the Roman numeral 1 or I here, not to be continuous from the next section. So I'm going to click on the Start At, and you'll see it's going to start at I. I'm going to click OK. And now if you look at my page number at the bottom of the page, I have the Roman numeral I. And if I scroll down to the next two pages of the front matter, you see the next one's II, and the third one's III. So my final change to the page numbers is to scroll down to the body of the report. And in that section, I need to do one final adjustment to the page numbers. So if you look at the page number down here, you see that they are in the correct Arabic numerals, but it starts at the page 4. So again, I need to fix that. So I'll highlight that, and then I'll right-click. And again, I'll get the menu to format the page numbers. I'll go to that menu. And then I just need to come down here to start at, and instead of being continuous from the previous section, I want this to restart at 1. I click OK, and now my page numbers in the body start with the Arabic numerals 1, 2, and so on, all the way to the end of the document, where the last page is 4. And that's how we format page numbers in our document, by creating new section numbers and formatting the individual section numbers in each page. Hope you enjoyed this video and have fun playing around with sections and page numbers in your document.